If you have a chance or two, go to the uh, center column at rents.com. Spend a little time looking at the videos there. There are three, six, eight of them now, nine of them. On the uh, subject of Black Friday, shopping madness. Or is it madness? Is what we look at and see and identify as madness now the norm? I would suggest it, it, it is, and becoming more so all the time. These people are so manipulated and so controlled now, they're no longer really individual people. They are a mass, they are a hive, they are a flock, they are a group, they are controlled, they are homogenized. They are so homogenized, they look alike, they talk alike, they act alike, they watch the same things, they eat the same junk food, they die of the same deaths, they suffer the same toxicity, physically, mentally, emotionally. They have the same emptiness inside. Look in their eyes. You people are different. You know that. I'm sure many of you feel like you don't even belong on this planet. Well, let's turn that around. I'm sure many of you feel like most of the people on this planet don't belong on this planet. Not anymore. They have evidenced every sign of a, collectively speaking, failed species. In fact, that's what I've called them for many years now. A failed species. The majority has failed. The majority has failed to reach its potential of individuality and success and achievement, at least expiring to the same. If they aspired to it, there's something going on. They've quit, these people. Entitlement, the whole entitlement culture is a virus which has taken charge of, of the majority. They want, they no longer want to work now, there are exceptions, you know, you know I, we always have to speak in generalities. But they are given and immediately become, in most cases, addicted to receiving. They love it. Anyway, there's a lot to talk about. And there are exceptions to everything I mentioned, as always. You, you, you guys understand that. Jordan Maxwell has been spending more time at trying to help people understand the control of the planet and the control of this species and why it has failed, why it has been engineered to failure or engineered into utterly conformist subjugation. The controllers of this game have been at it for centuries, maybe a thousand years, maybe two thousand years, we don't know. But Jordan has spent over half a century trying to educate and help people understand, and now as he looks back over all of his work, I think I can speak for him, and he feels a little frustrated. I've only been doing this 20 years next summer, and I would too. But there have been many lives that Jordan Maxwell's work and heart and soul have touched and made better, and that is always in the books. They can't take that away. All right, with that, let's uh, see if he's on the line. Are you there, Mr. M.? Yes, sir, I am. Welcome back. Happy to see you again. Yeah. Thank you for having me on the show again. Uh, yeah, it is very frustrating, and and I do get very, very depressed uh, most, of, most of the time. I stay very depressed because, you know, I, I, it's very easy to see what's happening, and there's not much you can do about it. You haven't failed, Jordan. The people have failed you and the few others like you who get it and try to help them. Uh, but really, have they failed or they have been, or have they been captured, put in mental and spiritual internment camps, even though they're still living at home, apartments, houses, whatever, even though they're still allegedly free, they are captives of a system, a media system, a media-dominated system, an education-dominated system, if you can call it education anymore, that is so insidious, so clever, so thorough, that they're no longer people. They have been reconfigured, have they not? Absolutely. I've been talking about this for many years, about the mutation, and we've talked about it before, the mutation of the human being. Uh, that's exactly what's happening. We're being mutated as a species on the Earth. I mean, uh, at one time, when I was growing up, not that long ago, <clears throat> people had their own opinions. They were, uh, they had uh, their views on things. They were open to discuss with other people. Uh, today, you can't do that. Today, uh, no one's interested in, in 
talking about anything of any importance uh, because it has nothing to do with anything that's important in life today, like basketball and football and sports. And so they look at you like you are like you got three heads when you start talking to them about anything that requires thinking. And it's rather frightening to me because I know where this is going. I, I uh, I've been watching it coming on for some 50 years. Now I'm watching it where it's going, <clears throat> and it's scary. Right? And where where it's going? And Jordan and I both, and many of you, remember the film Time Machine. That's where it's right. going, folks. That's right. <clears throat> and that original movie Time Machine, uh, you know, it, it showed how when they sped up in time, uh, there was the world was filled with people who all look alike. Uh, no one knew anything about anything. <clears throat> They were all just sitting around placidly, uh, not doing anything, not knowing anything, uh, totally under the control of them. And then, of course, what we remember, uh, uh, every now and then, I think it was every day at about noon, uh, a siren would go off, an alarm would go off, and everyone would just get up uh, automatically, and everyone would follow everybody else, and they would go up to the mountain, <clears throat> and the side of the mountain would open, and uh, a bunch of people would walk in until the siren stopped, and then people would turn around and go back to what they were doing, which was nothing. And so every day the siren would go off, and more people would get up and go back to in, you know going to the mountain. And uh, then finally uh, they get in. You get inside the mountain and find out that it's a hell hole, and it's where people are dying. There they're killing people. And I'm saying, you know, well, that's exactly what's going on today. I mean, they, they ring the bell, and now we have a war, so everybody can go to war, and they go in off to uh, be killed, <clears throat> to kill and be killed. And then when the war is, whistle blows, everybody goes home, and now the, the war is over. <clears throat> and then a couple of weeks later, the new war, and everybody goes back. So it's really uh, it's some sort of a ritual. That, I, that you know... You're right, and the idea of sending so many young people off to war and then bringing them back and expecting, now the controllers don't expect it, but most people would expect and hope that they would be able to reassimilate back into society. They can't. They have been brain destroyed, spiritually, at the deepest level, emotionally, morally. They've been destroyed by the process of killing and being killed. And they know it's all a lie. They've been, they've had to confront reality, and they can't come back and live the lives that they used to because those lives have been, they're dead. They're as dead right. as they could possibly be. Exactly right. And, and they know it. And that's why, you know, we've heard, I've heard, uh, even on the radio, talking about, uh, mass suicides and suicides in the, uh, in the military, especially, <clears throat> on the rise. So that's why there's a lot of, well, the only thing that's holding us together, it looks like, is a society of the drugs. Uh, you know, we, we belly aching about all the terrible uh, problems, the, you know, the drug cartels are causing all over the world and all the violence and gang wars because of drugs. There wouldn't be any gang wars or gang selling drugs if, if America wasn't sucking it up. We're the ones that are using it. Americans are, are wanting the drugs. That's why there, there are drug cartels. I mean, it's a huge nation here that, that's hooked on drugs, alcohol, violence, wars, movies. It's a very crass, crude uh, society we have become. Very crass, very crude, <clears throat> and uh, more animalistic. And and it's it really is sad because I see, I've said this before, I see little children going to school in the morning that I think, you know, what kind of a world are the adults leaving them? Well, first of all, the adults are not able to teach their children much of anything because they've never been taught. Their parents didn't know anything. And the parents before them, the grandparents, they didn't know anything. So knowledge is power. And this is the problem with America today. We have no knowledge. People do not understand how things work, why they work the way they do, what the words mean, and we don't really need to know. We have police who will beat you, uh, beat your brains out, 
so we know what we can and can't do. <clears throat> and when you go into a market or go into a store, they, the people working there, they have no idea in the world what they're doing. They just All they know is they take a credit card and push this button, and it tells them how much change to give, and that's it. That's all they know. If you confront them with something that they've never heard before, like a question, they just look at you like you're crazy because they don't know what you're talking about. They're only trained to do what they're supposed to do. Take the card, slide it through, push this button, and get back to change. That's it. That's all they know how to do. So I, I know that this is all part and part, uh, part and parcel of the new world order that we are to be grateful that's coming for us in which the whole entire world will have lost its humanity, it's lost its individuality, it's lost its spiritual connection with the divine. Uh, you know, the human race is just lost, and that's why I told you one of the most important scriptures in the Bible for me is in, in, the, in the Old Testament where it says, where there is no vision, the people perish. Extraordinarily interesting sentence. Where there is no vision, the people perish. And that's precisely what we have today. Around the world, talk to people, they cannot see where they have been, where they are now. They have no understanding of where they're going. And the few people who do understand that you need to keep your mouth shut because you're going to be ostracized. You're going to be kicked out of society if you start showing people what's going on. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear it. No. So there are none so blind as those who choose not to see. Indeed. Oh, indeed.